Hi, and welcome back to lecture six. Now in this lecture six, we assume you have watched all the lecture one to lecture five. If not, pause this video and rewatch and captured some of the key highlights that we have. As in lecture six, we'll be talking about the different strategies that we want to teach you in our beginners course. Let's look at our lecture six outline. Now in our lecture six outline, we have 10 cardinal stock market rules. Now these are cardinal uh, rules that you should know and try to memorize it if you're a first time beginner. And also we will share with you five different stock trading strategies which have worked time and time again. Let's look at the 10 cardinal stock market rules. Now the first one is always the money that you have. We always find that a lot of people use money that they cannot afford to lose to trade in the stock market. That is definitely a no-no. Always try to trade with money that you can afford to lose because they always say there is a part that we have to pay tuition fee first. And this is especially more true if you are a beginner and a first timer. If you don't have the money that you can uh, cannot lose, then paper trade first or paper invest. See how you perform if what we talk about in the, in the last lecture within six to nine months. Try it out first because when you start using money that you cannot lose, there's a lot of emotion that goes into a certain person, especially depending whether you are a person who can handle anxiety or a person who is as cool as a cucumber. People will react differently to the stock market. So first thing, know yourself first. Number two, perform asset allocation. It is also very important, don't want you to buy heavily into one stock. For example, at the time of recording uh, the COVID-19, we have some beginners just buy 100% on one stock, which is the rubber glove. And when they bought it high, the stock price start to tank down, they become very worried because they're buying money that they cannot afford to lose. So always have asset allocation, which means you diversify to three or four sectors with three or four different types of company for that reason. Number three, don't over diversify your stock portfolio. Now in the modern portfolio theory, they're always talking about somewhere between 40 to 60 stocks. Now, if you're going to have a capital less than 10,000 ringgit, you cannot afford to diversify to too many stocks because the trading commission will eat up into it. And even if the stock goes up by a fair bit, you cannot make back your money because of the trading commissions. Right? So it's always stick to three or five uh, stocks per portfolio, depending on your capital amount. Number four, do risk and return analysis. Risk return analysis signify the reward. Now, if your system that you are trading has good winning rates, then you can afford to take uh, higher uh, risk. But for most cases, you should have a good return to risk between 1.6 times, which means uh, 1.6 to a return for risk of one. It's like saying, I will take a 8% stop loss for my risk, but I will take 12% for my uh, return. Then you have a good reward to risk. Number five, know when to cut loss. It is always very important, especially for first time, you must cut loss. I cannot emphasize it more and more. A lot of people take cut loss as something nice to do, but not necessary. In, at times, you need to cut loss and recover and look back how much have you have, especially if you did not do enough asset allocation and you have bought so much on one stock. When that stock felt so much, you cannot cut loss. This is where you start to have a lot of anxiety. Generally, you want to have no more than 12% as your cut loss, all right? Now, why I say this is from my experience, once it go past 15% stop loss, you will not cut loss because you felt that uh, the stock will come back again. So you will just leave it there and eventually what turned out to be a short-term investment became long-term because you refused to cut loss. Let's look at number six, avoid bad quality companies. One of the 10 cardigan, cardigan, stock market rules is 
avoiding bad quality company. These are those companies who have low rating in the smart lobby as well as those who have negative EPS or negative return on equity, which we cover in lecture five. Number seven, start to learn to trade and invest early, which means begin your education early. Follow some of the good Sifu or good blogger or good uh, investment guru on the Facebook or myself and learn about their techniques, what makes them different in it, and see if that is suitable for you. Not all techniques out there that is taught by many other gurus is suitable for you. So also another thing is start your investment education plan early, especially when you have early, you can write on, on the power of compound return. Assuming you do well and there's a nice trend behind you, you will make decent return when you retire uh, early or maybe later part of your life. Number eight, don't overtrade and stick to a trading plan. I said it over and over again. Many traders, they buy first because they hear their friend or they read the news and then later on try to justify it with a plan. They don't work. Always have a plan. Can you imagine you go for a holiday, maybe to Japan. You didn't plan where to go. You bought a ticket, you flew over to Japan and when you get down to Japan, you start to plan. That is what it's like when you buy a stock without a plan. Think of it. Would it work? Not at all. So always have a plan and don't overtrade. Meaning if your capital amount is small, don't buy and buy and buy and buy and never sell. Right? Over trading with the cost of trading commission, it will eat up into your profit. And number nine, do your homework. Research, research and research. Find out more about the company. The smart Roby apps will give you the fundamental assessment based on the ratings and also looking at the charts from Smart Roby with the, with the uh, Trade VSA Pentagon system. It will give you a good entry whether the stock is good or not. If you're not comfortable, don't trade, don't invest. Stay sideline and watch. And number 10, take time to trade and invest without stress. Trading is very stressful because when it involves real money, especially your hard earned money, there will be time. Give yourself somewhere between nine to 16 months or even as far back as far as 24 months to learn about investing. Investing is about learning yourself, how with you and your money and the market. It will be interesting to find out when the market is really booming, how excited you will get and when the market is down, how depressed you will become. So take some time to learn about yourself, take some time to learn about the market and it will impact you. Now let's turn our attention to the five trading stock strategy. Now the first one which I always talk about is averaging up. It's a process of buying a company, right? When the share price is going higher. Now a lot of people like to do averaging down, which I don't recommend because you do not know how low it will get based on catching a falling knife. Can you imagine if you catch a falling knife, it's very painful. You want the stocks to turn back up first, then to start to buy. I know you're not buying at the low, but at least you're buying when the prices move higher. So this is what we call buy higher and sell higher. It is a very good strategy when the market is recovering because we want to see the market will recover. Can you imagine you buy a stock and it start to drop, 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 drop 10%, drop 20%, drop 30% and how would you feel? How would your anxiety be? Can you sleep at night well? So you want to wait for the market to recover or at least move to an uptrend. Remember, we talk about the market stages in the early uh, lecture. Review those stage one, stage two, stage three and stage four. Now in our second stock trading strategy is no other than stop loss. Now stop loss is an order to sell if the price break below a certain uh, level. Usually we talk about the support and we talk about this in the technical analysis in the earlier lectures where we have the support and resistance, right? Part of the basis of technical analysis. So when the market break below the major support, maybe the 200 day moving average or the neckline of the head and shoulder, you want to cut loss, right? By cutting loss, you will gain because you're protecting your overall capital. No doubt you will have some loss, but if you don't stop, if you don't cut, and the market go continue, you will feel even worse. Now, the third strategy is when you cut loss, you can always buy back, no doubt, right? The point about investing is never give up, all right? So it is best used when the market is under heavy selling or bearish, where we talk about the 
increase in the volume. So we talk about volume spread analysis, where you'll see when volume increases to a climatic volume, the market usually turns. And this is the part where you want to buy back. But at the earlier stage, you need to cut loss. Many times I see a lot of people, when they cut loss, when it is extremity, the market fall and fall. When they cut loss, the market turn back. And that is why people find it very difficult to come back again. Now, if you cut loss early, right, you can always come back because your loss is small. And when the market recover, you buy back at a good level, of course, following a certain trading tools and level, you still were able to make money to cover back. Trading and investing is about losses and winning. Make sure your losses are small, your winners are big. That is the rule. Now, next is buy index stocks. For those of you who don't like to do much work, look at what is the FBM 30 component. There's about 30 component stocks. And you want to buy this index stocks. Look for the one that has the lowest PE value and has the highest dividend curve if your strategy is looking for yield. Because going forward, this is one of the best stocks and strategies to have when the market volatility is high or when the market seems to be bearish. Low PE ratio can be fine in Smart Roby. And the second last stock strategy is buying on stock split. Many times, a lot of company that grow and grow to maybe 40 or $50 at the time of this recording, the post COVID-19, a lot of stocks like Top Glove and Supermax has done stock split. So in general, stock split generally don't do anything to the real value of the company. But because of the popularity, when the stock price splits, which means for three shares, you get one shares or one shares, you get three shares, depending on the condition of the stock split. People like it because now the stock price become more affordable, more people can partake in the rally and the stock price go up. So in the long run, some of these stock shares generally will rise in, in the long run. Now in contrast, a reverse stock split. Reverse stock splits is where many shares are combined into one that normally signify the company in some sort of distress. Do take note. Last but not least is buying on thematic play. Now, usually a lot of traders will look out for news to trade. This is where we talk about the sector rotation, usually from technology at this time of recording, uh, it seems to be slowing down. Then there is a play on energy or oil and gas and industrial products. So investor very quickly use this kind of tool like sector analysis. Again, we have it on the smart Roby to look for this kind of uh, thematic play and go in very, very early ahead of the market. So those are the five strategies we talk about on stock trading strategies. Review this lecture again, so you will find it becomes very, very familiar in your mind, so you can go out and do a good job as an investor, as a trader. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lecture.